Hello, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Today I'm going to be giving you a tip for using a mag needle. Rock and roll. All right, now that that's over, I'm just doing this kind of off the dome, I'm trying to get a couple videos done before I have to do a consult here. Um, tips for using mag needles. Um, more often than not, when I'm watching people use these types of needles, this grouping, I see them kind of coming at it wrong, right? So it's not that it can't be effective in doing it any kind of which way, but my goal has always tried to be, has always been focused on doing as little amount of work to get the greatest amount of return, right? So when I'm doing something in tattooing, let's say I'm doing a shade, right? I've got to like do a gradient shade from like a bottom of a line up. I want to try to do as little passes and I want to do it as efficiently and quickly as possible to make sure that like one, I'm saving the client money the entire way through, which is great. And then two, it's just not going to traumatize the skin so much. People can sit for longer. So this is where we kind of started coming up with these tips for using things, right? First tip, we'll just get to this. Number one, we want to think, I can't multitask, of a mag like a liner. Okay, so this is kind of weird because I mean, yeah, Ryan, it's a shading needle. I know, I know. But how you approach with using a mag, it should be like how you approach using a liner, right? When we go to do a line in tattooing, we have our liner needle set up, we have the skin stretched, and we make a line, right? It's simple, it's quick, it's efficient, it usually turns out good. When we go to use a mag needle, we'll go over something, you know, 15 times to end up with this gradient or whatever that we want to see that's, that's going to work, right? And that has not made sense to me. So, in saying this, if we're going to be thinking it's like a line, right? What do we want to do? Well, we want to be approaching every hand motion that we're making with this type of needle, much like we would a liner, right? We're going to pick our AB, which is always what we do, right? We get our start and our stop. Start and our stop. So what we're going to do is we're doing a line with whatever, our mag needle. I know I want to go from, and I'm doing this backwards, right? One spot to the other with my stretch. That's, that's my goal, right? I want to get from A to B with no interruptions and I want to have a desired result. So now we have our AB and we're going to think about what our like effect that we're trying to do is with this mag. If we're trying to do a gradient shade, maybe on a bevel, right? Where we know we're going to have a lot of pigment down at the bottom and it's slowly going to lighten up as it goes up higher, right? How can we effectively do that with one pass? Just ask yourself that. How can I make this work like this, right? We went over this in another video, right? Well, simple enough, the bevel shade. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that whatever mag I have, right, woven, flat, whatever, is going to be sitting at the greatest penetration here at the bottom of the line because I know I want to have full penetration with my pigment and my needles is going to go in to make good saturation. And the stuff that's going to be at the top is almost going to be superficial. So this needle is going to be high. This needle is going to be low. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from my A to B with it, single pass, done. Now, if you're saying, Ryan, I tried it and I ended up with, uh, man, this green does not want to come off. <laughs> Switching to blue. Say, Ryan, I tried it and I ended up with this. I had a good gradation of things slowly coming up, but I had this, these sets of lines. What do I do? That's all right. First thing we're going to ask ourselves is what is going to look, what's this going to look like in five years, right? If I've done this with a bit of a bevel and I know that my skin, my client's skin is going to be incurring trauma at a bit of a lower level, right? Because we're, we're influencing the needles go in, especially at an angle, not just the stuff that we see here, but the stuff that's underneath it, right? So we're creating trauma next to it, each side of this, right? Where we know that given age and how the skin thins, the pigment is going to try to move in the body. It doesn't always stay 100% saturated. That's why it bleeds out when you get older, right? But on average, what's going to happen with the pigment is that when we create trauma underneath the skin that may not be saturated with pigment, that's going to be the weakest spot of the skin. And that's where the pigment's going to want to move when people age, right? So if we know that, and we can kind of guess based on how deep the trauma is, you know, what uh, gauge of needle you're using, what type of taper it is, you know, if it's textured or not, whatever. If we know that that's gonna be occurring, 
And all we have to do is just basically make up the space in between. If the gap is too big, if we're using like, I don't know, 13 or something like this, right? And we know that the top needles that are being done are probably gonna be a little bit more superficial between each spot. All we're gonna do is just take it and shift our same liner right next to where we're at and do the same technique. We'll just create a halfway space, right? So at five feet, it looks like it's perfectly shaded looking up close, it isn't. But we know that five years down the road, when those colors that are gonna, whatever's black, black color, whatever, as they start to migrate into that trauma that we've, you know, put into this person, they're gonna accept that ink and it's gonna make it look either textured, depending on how deep our saturation is, or it's gonna smooth out down the line, right? It's forward thinking. Um, this is really complex stuff. When I should have said like tips for using mag needles, this is complex tips, right? We're trying to think so far ahead that we're planning for what we're doing with the tattoo now. We're trying to induce trauma into the skin so that it influences how the healing is gonna go as someone ages, right? So yeah, that's it. Tip one when we're doing stuff is think ahead, right? When you're using something like a liner, we have gotta think ahead. You have to. Because when you're using bigger needles or shorter tapers, maybe you aren't as comfortable with things, your machine's running super duper hard at a very steep angle to try to get this thing in, we have to think about what's gonna happen down the road, right? And if we're using it like a liner, and we're decreasing the total trauma that's coming in because we're thinking about how to lay these lines right next to each other, you can increase the chances of a good heal, right? And you're not leaving your uh, resulting tattoo or any effect you're trying to do up to chance which is realistically what everyone does, right? If I go in to do a shade on something, not using that green, and I have a line and I'm trying to shade off of it, if I come back and I'm flicking off the line with a flat, sometimes you're gonna get stuff when you go back over it that's dense here, maybe it's not there, maybe it's not so high there, and you're gonna have something that's super inconsistent. But at the same time, underneath this, right, when we get into the actual trauma box of where the skin is, We'll do our little skin model here. Beep. What we're doing when we go over top of this law is we're creating a ton of additional trauma in the dermis, right? So what does that mean? This is gonna be more likely to bleed out and move into that trauma after. So think ahead. You use it like a liner, commit to what you're doing, and plan ahead for the trauma that you're doing uh, to your clients. You should have good results. That's it. Tip one done. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.